Hello everybody and welcome to day two of the San Diego adventure. Today we're doing things a little bit different. We're going lobstering, but we're doing it with a little bit different tactics. My bare hands right here. We're gonna wander out on that big jetty right there into this bay and it's bugging time. Matt was telling me that this bay has probably the highest amount or concentration of of lobster this close to us. We've been trying to get those really big ones in that first video. If you guys didn't see the first video from yesterday, be sure to go down into the links in the description and check that one out. It was an absolute blast. Some really cool stuff happened and we made an incredible recipe. So today's a little bit different object. We're gonna try this in the morning and we have a completely different plan for this afternoon. We're gonna be doing some rod and reel fishing finally. So it's gonna be an exciting day. Let's get out there. Let's see how good these bare hands can do. All right, everybody, here goes nothing. And to tell you the truth, I'm a little nervous. I've never really dove in the ocean much, especially in a place with all this floating kelp and all this weird sea creature life. But I've been told that there are lobster scattered all the way through here. So I'm gonna give it my best. I'm gonna scare myself a little bit. I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's do it. Initial reaction. Super freaking creepy down there. I don't know what you guys think, but all that kelp whirling around, the visibility is not great. It ran super hard out here last night, so it looks like a little bit of turbidity has been added to the water, but this is freaky. I'm not gonna lie, this is really freaky swimming around in this stuff, but it's cool too, so I really hope we find a bug. Let's keep at it. Anybody ever told you diving for lobster was easy, they lied. I worked about a 100 to 200 yard stretch of this little jetty here. Found a couple of dead ones as you guys saw. All the little creatures, the trippiest thing of all with this experience right now is all these sounds. I don't know if you guys can hear that on the GoPros, but you can just hear the snap, crackle, popping of all the kelp and all the seaweed moving around. 
It was one time that first dead bug that I found, one that was laying up on his back, I went to go look at it and I heard, I don't know if you guys could hear it, but there was just that crack, that pop. And I'm pretty sure that that sound was another lobster. And I don't know if those things are molting out of their shell just like that. They're actually molting coming out just like any crustacean does or any crab or lobster species, they'll molt their shell and get bigger. But this is hard. I might try another spot. I'm gonna rest up just a second, hop back in, give it another crack, and then we're gonna move on to somewhere different. Basically, if you want to get out of the water quick, you just start barking and I'll be right on it, man. Okay. It's like, come on, dude. What's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, here goes nothing, everybody. All right, everybody, after leaving the jetty, we decided it was time to go spear fishing. And so Matt took me to one of the scariest places I've ever seen in my life. And this was this giant kelp forest. Later on in the day, he went to tell me that this is an, actually a breeding ground and a, a calving area for great white sharks. And as you can see, there's nothing more scary than thinking about these great white sharks and this water that we're looking at in front of us right now. This is all for you, addicts. Well, really, really tough viz. I'm sure you guys could see a little bit better than I could on the camera. But as I got down in the end of that kelp, I really could only see about 10 feet, which I could see being good, but the lighting was so dark and dim, I almost couldn't even make out the image of the fish. So hopefully the sun will come out a little bit more. I'm sure we're gonna try another spot. Just gotta keep moving. So the setup we're going with today for these bonefish, I got my Okuma 6 to 12, nine foot guide select. I got my addictive enforcer 30 pound, which is gonna cast really nice because we're not using much weight at all for this. I got a 20 pound bumper all the way down to a little blood knot so that my split shot doesn't slide down. And we're doing like kind of a standard Northwest side drifting rig, which is gonna be really fun because these things hit really hard and they move really fast. So I'm, it's gonna remind me of catching a summer steelhead, I'm hoping, but probably a lot faster. But I got my blood knot down to my 10 pound test. And I'm gonna go, just a simple rig. Do I need to tie a blood knot or a, a egg loop or anything on this? No, I wouldn't. No, just no, go no. straight to it. Yeah. So I'm gonna do something a little different, guys. I'm just gonna do your double over clinch knot. Straight to my hook. And there we have it, that's our setup. I'm gonna add probably two split shots here. And then we're fishing. Made it to the bone grounds, everyone. So we came out in the middle of this bay on these big sand flats, and these things are feeding on these little, little sand shrimp that we got here. Ghost shrimp, they call them down here. We call them sand shrimp up north. But all we're doing, again, is that double split shot rig with about a number four hook. And we're gonna drift with the current. This is like a side drifting style. So it's all about depth. It's all about range, where you're looking for the fish. 
Let's get at it. Tiny, you need a rod? <laughs> oh, oh, there he is! Oh! Dude, I thought I, I thought I knelt. Yeah. I thought I bowed. Damn it! There's no way my shrimp's still there. That was ham skis, dude. What, what ham town. Like I should. I need. I need less drag. Is what I need. Oh, I need to tighten okay. the drag during the fight. Did it? Did it come tight? Oh, it was. It was on there. But I didn't yank. I felt really good about my yanking. Oh, you definitely didn't swing. No. Or no, no, no. Oh, Yankee McDoodle over here. All right. First pass. I mean, we weren't in the water more than three minutes, there, everybody. So another half hitch on this tail. That presentation was everything I could tell. Here we go. Back in. Okay, spot number two. Muff the bite on the first pass. Then we got blown into the actual channel, which is illegal to fish. It got too deep on us. So these little split shot weren't getting down to the bottom. So we moved over onto the sand flat. And we got the perfect drift going here. We got the wind pushing along with the tide. We can keep that boat sideways and just keep these ghost shrimp down on the bottom. So the current is super necessary. You want that current to be turning up the sand, to be moving it a little bit, so that those ghost shrimp and all that natural bait gets rolled around. And we're emulating the same thing, a couple split shots, that ghost shrimp down just bobbing along the bottom, drifting around like he just got knocked out of the sand, just getting ready to get chowed on. Some chowder. Ah, oh, the great outdoors. 50 cows and big bites. Oh no, I got him. What is it? What is it? I got him. He's on. He's on. He's on. I don't know what it is. It's bigger. It's bigger. He doesn't even know he's hooked yet. Ah, oh, with the peaceful sounds of 50 cows in the background. Oh, what is this? What is this? It looks like a little perch. Bay bass. Oh, what a cool little creature though. Look at this, everyone. Wow, not poisonous, right? No, no, no. All right. little bay bass everybody this is a cool looking little guy a new one on the list for me come on there he goes thank you little dude another species off the list nice let's get another shrimp on here we're looking for bones oh my gosh he's on something there well no it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely something yeah let's, i think it might be a bass Woo! Same little bay bass. Same little bugger. Are they edible? Are they bait? Yeah, people eat them. Willing to play. I just, oh, I just blew it. Oh no. There it is. <laughs> I think I got another bass. Yeah. There you go. Jackpot. Dogs on. Really let that one eat. I'll tell you what, it's awfully wiggly. Oh, totally new species. Totally re redeemed myself. What is it? A sargo. It looks like, a, it almost looks like a little red fish in a way. Like a black drum? Yeah. It's got that really weird little nose on him, little nub nose. Super cool fish though. Another one on the list. Cool. Woo! Cool. Excellent. Got a sargo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. it's gone. Uh oh. Uh oh. That might be a different animal. Oh my god. You ready to little? Is it coming around? Oh, bigger bass. Bigger bass. Oh, Woo! cool looking. Look at that thing. <laughs> Jackpot. What a cool looking fish. Oh, nice. That's how you got some cool fish. fish. Yeah. The beetle worked. Beetle <laughs> juice. Beetle juice. Oh, did I get him? Is he coming at me? Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. oh. What is this? Oh, watch your rod. What's going, your rod on? What's going on? Live action, everybody. Oh, he's a 
the Brown Brothers! Okay, over under. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, you got it. Yep. Oh, 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 Yeah, I saw Crumb. That's a bone! That's a nice That's bone. That's a bone, brother, yeah! Okay, the net's over there, but, well, you know what? Keep fishing, dude. Just keep fishing. There. No, I got the net. Oh, man, look at this little thing. Oh, dude! Okay, I'll get the net. You go for the fish. Cool. Look at this thing, everyone. What dreams are made of, people travel halfway across the world to catch these little things. Way to go, Matt. What'd you call him, South? Crumb. South Bay Bling. South Bay Bling. What a special little creature. Reminds me a lot of our, our mountain whitefish that we have in the Pacific Northwest, but just a totally different fight. This thing is so neat. Look at him. All right, thank you so much, little guy. Thanks for the fun, thanks for the memories. We'll see you later. Oh, so cool, brother. Yeah, one in the boat. Mission accomplished. Yeah, what a day, yeah, dude. dude. Let's get these shrimp back in there. That was You're awesome. You're still fishing. <laughs> hey, look at, oh, look at it piling up on the meter underneath us. It's just starting right now. It's just starting. The, the tide's starting to move. Yeah, yeah, you see those turns come through? They were following all this. That was so cool. So we've been talking about following the birds out here, which is very iconic of any sort of bay or ocean fishing. You're looking for those birds to show you the bait, to show you the bait, to show you the fish, and then ultimately go and catch those fish. Oh, certain kind of seagull just flew by. He identified some bait. We saw it on the finder. Instant hookup. So fun when a plan comes together. Yep. Something. Oh, dude. Is that that's, bigger, that's bigger and heavy. Is that that's halibut? Big and heavy. Yes, that's a halibut. You have a halibut. It never came off bottom yet. Yeah, you, you might have a big halibut, dude. What is that? It bit super slow, too. I just let it load up. Guys, that's heavy. Yeah. You see that, you got a ray, but there's halibut in here. It feels a little rayish. Oh, it's wait a second. That's kind of a head shake. Because it may have may have rolled on it. Oh, no, no. That, oh. Dude, that's not. That's, I think that's a halibut. Bro. It's kind of acting like it, that weird, like, Kind of playing out. They only go sideways. They don't really go up and down unless you get them way oh, off the bottom. Gonna wake up here. <laughs> there he goes. There he goes, everybody. He's migrating. We got a migrator. Oh, it's sick. We got to chase him, everybody. We got a migrator. He's heading south. We gotta go. He's heading to the equator. Few moments later. Guys, he's a migrator. What the hell do I got on here? This is cool. Woo. Ah, uh, I feel pretty skatey. I don't know. Yeah. I'm scared. So as you guys saw yesterday, the variety of species of animals in these estuary or in this this estuary in here is just like it's pretty it's it's almost hard to explain. If you guys didn't see yesterday's video or the video that we filmed last night, we were lobster fishing, we pulled something different up in every single pot. So it's already showing so far as we've been out here, we've caught bonefish, we've caught a lizard, we've caught sargo. bass, sargo. we got a sargo, and now we got who the hell knows. Yeah, that's a head shake. That's a halibut, dude. That's a halibut. That's gotta be. Guys, we got we got something that might be edible here. And he's migrating back towards the SD. I don't blame him. Pretty good view over there. <laughs> oh, no, shark. I don't know what that is, dude. I wonder if he, you had a turtle just swim into it. You wanted your turtle pick. <laughs> what if? The turtle. It's Whoa. a Seal. Got it, whatever it's a it is. Seal? I, he has whatever it is. He'll let it go. He'll let it go. We'll fight him on 100%. That was okay. seal 1000%. What the hell? Where did that thing come from? You sure it wasn't a turtle? <laughs> it might have been a turtle. It's a big round head. Yeah, that dude. Thing. But it just did a little surface. It, I mean, like that was like a th two foot long, well, well, two foot well, wide head. What is going on here? I can see. Oh, crazy. wait, wait. Oh, I guess. Is he going to jump? <laughs> I love it. I love not knowing what the hell's going on right now. This is so cool. No, it's run, run. Oh, it's got to be. Oh, it's a huge turtle. It it's is, a turtle it is. for sure. Yeah. yeah, that was definitely a turtle. But his head's about as wide as little is. Dude, this thing's 200 pounds. Yeah. It just doesn't. It doesn't. Open. Oh, there he goes. That's okay. That's yeah. okay. We got more fishing to do. What a fight, everybody. We hooked a dinosaur, a prehistoric mammal. Yeah. 
so cool. Got to see him a couple times. Sorry we couldn't get it close enough to the camera, but I think we all got the gist. We'll actually put in here the facts on these green turtles, show you a couple pictures of them here. Switch to that right now. And it's time to catch more bonefish. All right, everybody, we're back in Kinnegy's kitchen once again, and I really hope you guys are enjoying this episode. I know there wasn't a ton of fish, but there was a lot of exciting parts throughout the episode that I had a lot of fun experiencing, and I'm glad we got to share it with you guys. But now, we're gonna do a little catch and cook here with the next video that's coming out from the San Diego trip, and that is the Mahi Mahi Taco. So let's step over and let's get this going. All right, so the recipe that we're doing is a blackened mahi taco. And this was a recipe that was recommended to me by somebody who lives down in San Diego. They said, everybody just does it blackened. So I said, hey, I got blackened seasoning, let's do this. So I'm gonna cut these things up into nice little strips. And this mahi is beautiful. And you guys, this episode that's coming out next with this mahi fishing is probably one of the most bonkers fishing that I've ever seen. 30 people on a boat, lines everywhere, fish everywhere, and absolute badness throughout the whole thing. So be on the lookout for it. It's probably coming out in the next few days. It's gonna be a fun one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this mahi, which is really cool. And if you guys don't know what mahi are, they're actually called a Dorado. They're called mahi mahi. They're called a couple different things uh, throughout the ocean. But basically, they are the most plentiful and the fastest growing fish in the ocean. We had a really good time. It's incredible fishing, and these things are absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna chunk these things up in the forest, and we're going full on blackened mode. And one thing I've noticed so far with the mahi is it's a pretty fishy flavor. Honestly, you wanna actually get a good seasoning to it. You don't wanna really cook it plain. Um, so I'm gonna go blackened. And I think that's why that blackened seasoning does so well for this recipe, is mainly because it, it has a nice strong taste. And the flavor of the fish is amazing but it is very fishy for those of you out there that don't like a super fishy taste. But just adding a little bit of seasoning, uh, whether it be a, a Cajun or a taco or, or a blackened like this, really, really helps accent that flavor of that fish and makes a freaking awesome taco. So we can see the smoke's kind of starting to come off our oil here. We're gonna turn that down to medium and get these things in there. All right, fish is almost done. It's time to get our special tortilla ready. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna turn our burner on, get the thing ripping. And if you guys have been watching any of these episodes lately, I've been inspired by our good friend Life from Northwest Fishing Secrets on this recipe with the cheese tortilla. I'm gonna throw our tortilla right over the top of it here. All right, this fish is looking absolutely perfect. You can see it's not just a clever name, it's blackened. We got a perfect crisp on each side. And the thing I like about this recipe most of all is how healthy it is. Ow, ow, grease in the eye, hot oil in the eyeball. Ow, ow, addicts. That was uncalled for. Well, I can't see now, but we're gonna continue cooking. Wow, things really got out of hand there, but the fish looks great. I can't see it. You guys can see it, I can't see it. So just comment below on what you think of it, owie. His first casualty of war here on Addicted with Kinnegy's Kitchen. Pretty lawless place out here. All right, look at how amazing that looks, everybody. So we got paired with this, we got our avocado, we got some cilantro, and we got my signature slaw. Just do a coleslaw mix with some sour cream, a little bit of taco seasoning, and it comes out to a perfect slaw. And of course, we won't be forgetting our tapatillo sauce here. Here we go, everyone. Our tortilla's ready. Perfection on a plate. Gonna add our mahi in here. Here's a bit of the slaw. A little bit of cilantro on top. Oh yeah, and of course not to be forgotten, the avocados. There it is guys, in perfect Southern California form, the mahi mahi taco. Look how perfect that looks. It's like M for Mahi, <laughs> right? All right, everyone, moment of truth. This is my first time ever having Mahi tacos, so I'm really looking forward to this. Great presentation. 
Let's try the flavor. Oh my goodness. So you see the color of that meat? Very light, very fresh tasting. What it really tastes like to me is like a mix between tuna and rockfish. Now, honestly, that's what it looks like. It has the same texture as tuna, but that nice, light, flaky taste like a rockfish has. So definitely one of my favorite fish that I've ever eaten in a taco. I'm gonna finish my dinner. And if you guys like this video, be sure to go up here and click this thing. Is there cilantro on my teeth? No? Okay. Sorry, everyone. And if you guys like this video, go up here and click this link to this next Catch and Cook. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on, give this video a comment and that thumbs up and you can be the comment of the day, just like this person right here. You guys, this has been so much fun. You stay fishy. We'll see you out there.